Hi. On the line with me, we have professional wrestler turned actor Scott L. Schwartz. How are you doing? Very good, JT. How are you doing? I am doing great. We have a list of questions for you, so if you don't mind, let's go ahead and get started. I had nothing to do with it. I was out of town when that happened. <laughs> <laughs> now, growing up, were you a wrestling fan? If so, who'd you look up to? You know, it's funny because I, I was never really... I, you know, never boys really denied that they were ever a mark. Um, of course, before I got in the business, I became a mark, but I was never a wrestling fan when I grew up. I was... I was at my grandma's house, God rest her soul, and um, I was down the hallway and I was playing, and uh, she never would do anything bad in front of me or around me or not curse, nothing. And all of a sudden, I hear her cursing. So I creep down the hallway, and I get close to the living room, and I come around the corner, and I see her sitting on the edge of the couch screaming, and she's pointing at the TV set, and I looked at the TV, and it was professional wrestling. So needless to say, I love my grandmother so much that um, you know, I figured, well, hey, you know what? Uh, she loves it. I love it. And um, that, that's the rest of history, as they say. So wrestling wasn't your first career choice, I take it. What was? Um, you know, like any other kid, you have a, a lot of imagination. I'll tell you what, back in those days when I was a kid, it was pretty, sky was the limit. You could be an astronaut or a pilot nowadays, getting so hard to, to do things that you really wanted to, I guess. Um, you know, I guess, looking back at it now, I wanted to be, be a lawyer. I went to school to be a lawyer. And, um, of course, I never worked out, but you're having professional wrestling. When you're making money, uh, you never go back to school, no matter what people tell you. Uh, you you're on the road, you're making money, you're having fun. Um, you're buying great things, you know, and you're well, go sit in a classroom all day for eight hours a day, and uh, you know, you you get a law degree, and then and once you graduate, you can become a lawyer, and you're thinking, well, you know what, uh, I like this a lot better than that. Now, back when you trained, it was a lot different for you know to be a professional wrestling. Can you talk a little bit about your training compared to how people get trained these days? Yeah, you know, we were talking about this, JT, you and I, and the bottom line is, of course, the guys who came into the business before me, the Killer Kowalskis and the Nick Bockwickles and all those guys, their training, our training really pales in comparison to the training that, that we went through, but nonetheless, it was very tough. We would, uh, Killer Kowalski was my trainer, God bless his soul as well, um, he had a school at the Salem YMCA, and me and Kevin the Butcher Hughes and a couple other guys used to go up there, and um, we would train. And in the winter time, he was a real bastard. It was uh, there was a skylight in the Salem YMCA, and all the panes of glass were broken, um, and the cold air would basically settle into the room. And I remember nights when I'd actually have to get in there and also with the ski park on because it was so cold in that room that, that you'd, be, you'd be dying in there, you know. And uh, it, was, it was hard. It was just the first day of wrestling school was uh, take a forward roll, take, take a bump, learning how to take a bump, and then uh, going through that and seeing that, that down pat. And it was almost like the Karate Kid where Kowalski's getting in the ring and saying, grab the ropes, and fall back on your shoulder blades. And we would do that for hours at a time. And I got so sick and tired of it, I said, I want to, I want to grab a guy in a headlock or something like that. And, you know, Kowalski would just say, no, do as I say. And then one, one student made the mistake of saying, of course, he would say, where did you learn wrestling from? And the student said, well, I watch professional wrestling. And Kowalski screamed on top of his lungs and said, don't watch professional wrestling, you know. So it was it was tough. The training was was really hard. I got to tell you. I'm looking back on it now. I would do it all over again because the training that you had was minuscule compared to the fun that you had on the road once you got out of wrestling school and you went on the road and you had a name like Walter Keller Kowalski on your mantle as having trained you. Believe me, I got into a lot of territories with that name.
Now, what are some of your fondest memories of him? You know, uh, Walter, God, Walter, I was so blessed to have known Walter. I was so blessed to have known Bruno San Martino and had had dinner with those guys. I mean, as a young kid who who just, um, you know, had gotten into professional wrestling to sit with these guys and have dinner. Um, Walter was a great, great man. He was he was so tremendous, and um, he was such a great teacher. And, and i got to tell you, um, every time I would call uh, from the road and I'd say, this promoter wants to get me in there, this promoter wants to get me in there, he would tell me to trust him or not to trust him, because like I told him before, all our contracts were a handshake. And, um, you know, it, it, was, it was tough. But, um, you know, Walter was a, a great guy. And like I said, um, having him train me was, was really a, a positive influence. I had a really rough child, childhood with my uh, abusive father. And um, going to wrestling school right, right at, at 20 years old, um, he was probably the best thing, the closest thing to a father I ever had. And um, when I heard that he was getting sick and his legs were starting to give out, his his wife mistakenly told me that he was getting dementia. And I said, well, I better go back there before he forgets who I am. And I spent a marvelous week um, with Walter and me and uh, Kevin the Butcher Hughes went down and visited him and we spent a great week with him. And then unfortunately, uh, about two months later, he slipped into a coma and passed on. But, um, you know, it just, it, it was great. I have a nice tribute to Walter on my website, which is um, www.ultimatebadguy.com. Ultimate is spelled E-U-L-T-I-M-A-T-E-B-A-D-G-U-Y dot com. And on the wrestling page, I have a nice tribute. Well, actually, on the in memoriam page, I have a nice tribute to Walter, and um, uh, I created that. I mean, it was it was an opportunity for me to uh, go online and just get uh, uh, a lot of images of Walter and cut and paste them into into a mosaic. And um, I just I enjoyed doing that because it was um, you know my dedication to Walter. Hmm. Obviously, he made a big impact in your life. Oh, he did. I mean, you know, without, you know, I always told Walter this when I saw him, and he used to tell me it was bullshit, but I used to tell Walter, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have a professional acting career because uh, you turned me into a professional wrestler, and that uh, rolled over into a professional acting career. And when you walk in off the street and tell people, well, I'm a big guy, and I can do this, and I can do that, then you say, okay, whatever, stand in line. Uh, when you say you're a professional wrestler and you walk in there, they say, wow, uh, okay, we can do something with you. Mm-hmm. Now, what are your memories of working for Vern Gagne? Uh, Vern, I only worked a couple times for Vern. I worked in the Cow Palace in San Francisco. I was actually living in San Francisco. I was actually living in Sacramento, California, and I had uh, been working for Antonio the Ripper, and... Um, we, um, Kevin Butcher Hughes and I uh, shipped out to Vancouver, British Columbia, and worked for Al Tomko up there. And then I came back to the territory, and I was working um, for Leone again, and I was picking up some shots elsewhere as well. Uh, and Vern was running in the Cow Palace in San Francisco, even though he was not, he was not really running anywhere else. You know, I mean, not, not, not anywhere else in California, excuse me. Um, Antonio Leone more or less had uh, the Northern California Territory, which consisted of our territory was um, Sacramento, Stockton, Bakersfield, and Fresno. And he would throw in towns like Modesto, Madera, uh, believe me, um, not great places. Mm-hmm. Now, my next question for you is, um, did you ever have any run-ins with Vince McMahon? If so, what are your opinions on him? You know, um, Vince McMahon, um, I uh, worked for his father. 
uh, Vince McMahon Sr., who is a sweetheart of a guy. And if you talk to anybody in the business nowadays uh, that had any kind of encounter with Vince McMahon Jr., they won't say anything nice about Vince Jr., but they'll have nothing but great things to say about Vince Sr. Um, Vince Sr. Was, was a marvelous guy. Um, you know, he took care of the boys. Nowadays, Vince McMahon Jr., and like I said, I've never worked for him, but the stories that I've heard from a lot of the boys that I know didn't have real nice things to say about him. Now, you've gotten to wrestle in a lot of different countries. What are some of your favorite countries to wrestle in? Uh, geez, you know, every, every time you leave the United States to wrestle in another country, you're representing um, professional wrestling there. They have their own wrestlers. I, um, South Africa, was I was very fond of South Africa. I was very fond of um, New Zealand and Australia and uh very fond of the Orient. Um, you know, once you go over there, like I said, it's you really made the grade because you're going and you're representing professional wrestling and they have their own guys there and you have to work with their guys. So needless to say if you're not if you're not that great, uh you're really gonna be a bad uh um, a bad reflection on professional wrestling. Now, how did you, um, you know, get in touch with the acting scene, and what made you transition into acting? Well, it's funny. Back back in the old days, when I was wrestling out here in California, 1980 was before cable TV was really getting off, um, and Vince McMahon had not monopolized professional wrestling yet with the inception of cable TV and how it went around the nation and all that stuff. But um, I was in wrestling in Bakersfield, California, and our show went across the grapevine, which is the big mountain range between Bakersfield and Los Angeles, and an agent came up and um, approached some of us. He had seen our TV show on um, The Rabbit Ears. I mean, there wasn't even any cable then. And he came up and he wanted to recruit a couple of us. He approached me and a few other wrestlers. And um, unfortunately, uh, they didn't really want to pursue it or they didn't have the, the tools to pursue it. And I had size and I was able to take bumps and able to fight teams and stuff like that. So uh, I went down to L.A. And we all went down to L.A., me and three other guys. Uh, we visited with this agent. Uh, I didn't really trust him. Um, um, I've had a great knack of being able to detect a rat when I see them through the years. And um, I didn't trust him. Uh, and he gave us a list of Screen Actors Guild agents. And when I got back to Sacramento, I started calling them up and saying, hey, I'm a nice Jewish boy, and uh, I'm an, a wrestler, and, uh, you know, blah, 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 and yada, yada. And eventually I got somebody who had confidence in me and, and my ability, and they um, they brought me down and got me some auditions, and that's the way the ball started rolling. And once you get bitten by that bug, uh, it's like the wrestling bug. Once you get bitten by it, there's, there's, you might as well throw in the towel because you're not going to be able to resist it. Mm-hmm. Now, do you prefer doing stunt work or acting? You know, I, I think there's, there's a certain element to doing stunt work, and I think that, uh, and although a fight scene or or anything action oriented is considered to be stunt work, but it really isn't. It's really acting work because you have to make it look believable. Um, the acting work uh, to me is great because you have a certain amount of um, creativity, and you can create characters that people won't soon forget. And if you do it right, you do your job, you have people, as I've had in the past, I mean, thank, thank God for my success, and I'm just really happy about it. But you have people coming up to you in the street, and they say, uh, you know, you Scott Schwartz. And I'm like, uh, well, yeah, I am. And they say, oh, cool to me. And I'm like, do you know me? And they're like, no. And, and I'm like, well, how do you know my name? Well, I waited 
I saw you in this film, and I waited for the credits and saw your name and remembered your name, and I'm like, wow, that, that just blows your mind, you know. Mm-hmm. I can see what you're saying on that. Now, you were in The Scorpion King with The Rock. Did you work directly with him, and what are your feelings on him? Uh, I work with The Rock. Dwayne is a, Dwayne is a great guy. Uh, he's really very, very talented, a very nice guy. Um, Dwayne, uh, Dwayne was cool because when I first met him, uh, we were talking, and I go, well, I was one of the boys, and... He said, really, you know, the training. We started talking about the business, of course. And, um, you know, Dwayne really wanted to know about his grandfather, Peter Maivia. And um, I had been, um, you know, on the road with Peter, and I knew Peter. And unfortunately for Dwayne, he, um, he didn't really get to know his grandfather because uh, Peter was on the road the whole time when he was a kid. When I met Dwayne the first time in Hawaii, uh, he was 12 years old. So I had that little tie-in there with um, with Peter, and also I had wrestled Rocky in 1986. So um, we got along great, and it was great working with somebody. It's almost like being in the business again, really, when you think about it, because you're working with one of the boys, and he knows you're going to take care of him because you're one of the boys, and he was telling me some horror stories about the guys today in the ring, about how they just pick you up and throw you on your head, and they don't care about protecting you. Yeah. So it was pretty cool. And it's it, and when you're doing a fight or something like that, you've you got to trust the people you're working with, because if you don't, it, it's not going to be, it's not going to come across as being real good. Yeah. Now, some of your most famous work was in Ocean's Eleven. How did the acting job come about? Um, you know, getting involved in the Oceans trilogy was really cool for me. I um, I did the first one, and then they asked me to come back and do the second one, and then I did the third one. Um, but, you know, it's, it's you do so many junky movies along the way, and, and there's a spattering of great movies, and you do, you know, great movies, and you do horrible movies, but that was like, that was like the creme de la creme. That was... Um, that was really a tremendous film to work on. All, all those guys are really cool. Um, you know, and, and, and like I said, you, in order to make a great product, you have to get along with the people you're working with, and we made a great product with 11. 12, I don't know, 13 was okay, but not, not to the degree of 11. Um, I thought Ocean's 11 was a, was a great, brilliant film. Now, other than that, what are some of the works you've done in acting that you're most proud of? Oh, geez, I've played everything from cholos to Russian mafia guys. Um, I just directed and um, I directed and um, I'm in the process of filming a long version of my first film, uh, Changing Hands. Uh, it can be found at www.changinghandsfilm.com. And um, it's a movie about a gun, and, and I decided to get together with some friends and make it. And um, I had aspirations to direct a, at least one film, and um, I did it. And um, we're reinforcing the, um, the short version right now, making a longer version of that. And um, and uh, I'm sorry, I lost. What was the question again? The yeah. question. The question was, were some of the acting gigs that you were most proud of? Oh, yeah, that was very proud. Uh, that was that was very, I was very proud of that. Um, very, you know, the, the, I played a Hispanic gang member in a film called Carmen the Champion with Carmen the Gospel Singer. Uh, he's on TBN a lot. And um, very proud of that. And just, you know what, it, you only have so much time in a film and you try to, you try to create the most memorable roles that you can with the time that you have. And I think I've done a pretty fair job of that. I think everything I've been in, I think everyone has said, well, you did a great job in that. Now, compare and contrast working in movies to wrestling. Jeez. Uh, um, um, there, there is no comparison. 
I mean, uh, yeah, the money's better. Um, you're protected by a union. You have medical benefits. But the fun and the great enjoyment that we had and the hard work that we did, uh, nothing can compare to that. And a lot of times I'll sit down with, uh, with you know, the old guys, the older guys now, and, you know, we talk about what it, you know, the times we had and the things we did. And like I said, I'm working in this wrestling documentary, and these guys are just really so great, so great. And I'm so proud to be working on that right now. Now, you got to work with Randy Savage on Spider-Man. What are your opinions on him, and what was your experience on the side of the Spider-Man movie? Uh, you know, Randy is um, Randy's great. He's a good guy. He comes from a great wrestling family. We talked about wrestling families, the Papa family. Uh, I still keep in touch with Lanny. Um, you know, Randy was great. No complaints. Uh, great guy and, uh, you know, great to work with. Now, what projects do you have coming out that fans can look out for? Uh, you know what? It, it's In an actor's world, it's not like the old days where you get a contract six six months in advance and you lose weight or put weight on or prepare in some way. Um, you know, we go day to day. Like, I could go to an interview tomorrow and uh, a call back on Friday and start work on Monday. That's how tight it is right now. Um, you know, right now, I've just done a bunch of films that are in the can. Uh, if anybody wants to check them out, they can look on um, imdb.com, which is the Internet Movie Database, which is very informative and it has most of what you've done. And um, they can look up my name, Scott L. Schwartz, and um, they can see what's coming up and what's in the can and what, what I'm doing in the future. Like I said, you don't have a really big window of opportunity to figure out what you're doing next. You know, you just have to, you know, uh, get it done. But um, basically, um, I'm still working on my film, which is great. I've had a lot of big people in there, Kevin Sorbo, a uh, buddy of mine, and uh, Eddie Jemison and Eric Oleniak and some other people. And um, I'm just trying to finish that one off, and uh, who knows what uh, where the road will take me. You know, it's like when we went on wrestling. At first wrestling tour, you just went down the road in an old car and just hope for the best. Now, aside from acting and wrestling, you're also a reserve for the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Would you like to talk about that a little bit? Uh, I'm actually a part-time. Uh, I went to a different level of training. Uh, there was a bunch of guys that did some kind of linking day training, and they just got separated by post, which is the police officer standard of training. And... Um, Basically, um, yeah, it, it's cool because uh, you're doing something that is that not a lot of people are actually afforded the luxury of doing, and uh, that is taking people's freedom away. Um, you know, you're going out, you're doing a job, and uh, it is um, it's incredible. It's just uh, a great thing to do, and not not a lot of people have been afforded the luxury in their lifetime of being able to do the things that I uh, am able to do. Now, you mentioned your website earlier. Why don't we go ahead and plug that one more time so that fans can keep in touch with you? Uh, yes, it's www.ultimatebadguy.com, one word, U-L-T-I-M-A-T-E-B-A-D-G-U-Y. If you say it a thousand times a week, uh, you get to know it. And, um, you know, .com and... That's it, and uh, I also have the um, uh, Scott L. Schwartz Children's Foundation, which I'm very, very proud of, and we do a lot of work with the uh, uh, Marine Corps Toys for Tots, um, pro-military. Um, you can find that at uh, the Scott L. Sh- or Scott L. Schwartz Children's Foundation dot WordPress dot com, and there's all kinds of information on that. I do a lot of work at Children's. Uh, cancer hospitals. I lost my sister to lung cancer in 1998, and um, I've been carrying on her um, her spirit uh, in visits to um, sick children everywhere across the world. Well, I would like to thank you for joining us today. 
Well, thank you, JT. I really appreciate the opportunity to be on here. And, uh, you know, the beginning of my career, um, we relied heavily on guys like you who are just getting people out there. And, um, you know, there wasn't a lot of media back then. I mean, I go through my wrestling album for years of wrestling. I only have about maybe 200 images. And um, that's not a lot. Nowadays, everyone's taking thousands of pictures of me every day, and it's all digital, and you have to put a photo mat to get it developed and wait a week and all that other junk. Yeah, I know what you mean on that. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, JT. I really appreciate it.